Let me start tonight with this. There ought to be a sports page, I think, for complainers, chronic critics, and as Pope Francis would say, sour pusses. You know, the people who don't produce, don't propose, don't dream, whose only thrill comes in the failures, even temporary, of others, whose proudest moment, whose highest fantasy is to burp out a pathetic I told you this wouldn't work. Well, today is not a good day for the Complainers League. It looks like the president's health care law is open for business. It looks like after all the rooting for disaster, all the misery loves company types have had their say. A solid majority of the country wants the president's program to make it. Not only that, but it's now got some solid wind in its back. The website, we're told, is working. Yeah, right. All right. Chris Matthews talking about a... Uh a tingle or whatever. He's going to be interviewing Obama again, by the way. Uh, joining us now to talk about um, the uh, middle class pinch um, that uh, he says uh, Obamacare uh, cannot hide from, and I, I wholeheartedly agree, is uh, David Fredoso, editor, uh, former editor of um, the Washington Examiner, now columnist. He's now editor of uh, Conservative Intelligence Briefing, and also the author of great books such as Spin Masters and uh, The Case Against Barack Obama. Hey, David, it's been a while. How are you? Hey, great, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. Okay, so uh, your, your piece in The Examiner talking about, um, talking about how Obamacare, uh, it, there was an analogy made, I guess, by Paul Krugman that uh, soon uh, it'll be like uh, uh, Benghazi, where he says nobody cares and everybody's forgotten about it, and that's what's going to happen with Obamacare when it comes to uh, the Democrats and Obama, that this will uh, fade away and, and no one will remember it uh, in a little while. But uh, that, that's not going to happen, is it? Well, I, I, I think it's very, very difficult to say that that could happen with something that's happening to everyone around you. I mean, uh, I, I was just thinking of it this way. What was it that made Vietnam so difficult? It was the fact that everybody knew somebody who was dying. Um, you had so many Americans getting killed there. What, what was it that made the Iraq War, as it started to go sour, people people knew so many, uh, uh, you know, somebody, you knew somebody, or you knew somebody who knew somebody who had suffered a loss there in Iraq. This is how public opinion turns, is that it affects you personally. And in this case, you have, first of all, all, all these, you know, so far about 6 million people receiving can their uh, cancellation notices for their health care. Generally, these are people who aren't, you know, a disproportionately low number of them will be able to get subsidies. They're being offered insurance that is not as good as what they had in many cases, or even most cases. And more expensive. Exactly. And it costs, you know, a couple hundred bucks more a month. Well, you know, these are people generally who are middle class folks, people who are in the individual insurance market. You're talking a lot of small business owners and, and folks along those lines who, even if they make just under the subsidy cut and they get something, it's probably just a couple bucks, if anything at all. Um, one of the things Obamacare does is it assumes that if you make about, you know, just under 400% of the poverty level, so that's about uh, 40 some thousand dollars for a single person and uh, up to 94000 I believe, for a family of four. If you're making about that, then they say you should be spending about 9.5% of your take-home pay on health insurance. And for most of these people in the individual market, they were not spending that much, and now they're going to, and they're not eligible for a dime in government subsidies until they already do. No, you're you're absolutely right. And deductibles, it all adds up. And uh, the the, uh, the the sticker shock is something that's going to last. And you talk about six million, uh, David, uh, or so who have lost it uh, already. Uh, get on board because uh, or get ready, I should say, because eighty-five to a hundred million are going to lose it next year. Well, that, that's right. And, you know, in, it's not just people who are going to specifically lose a plan and, and not have anything, but even people say if you work for a small business and you're uh, not in a state where it can renew your insurance for another year, then right now you're experiencing pretty bad sticker shock. I mean, uh, I was just talking with uh, some folks at a small business the other day who were facing this. They, they did early renewal. Uh, but if, if your business can't, then you're going to get slapped with much higher premiums this year because of Obamacare. And it's very hard to find anybody who's paying less because of Obamacare. Right, right. I, I mean, so and, few stories out there at this point. And, this, and the excuse is, well, health insurance goes up every year. 
Of course, it's going to go up. Right. But of course, Obama told us it would save uh, families twenty five hundred dollars a year, which is yeah. a, a bunch of nonsense. And I, as I was talking to uh, to Congressman Doug Collins earlier, um, I, I heard that Obama, either himself or through the White House, every day this month they're going to have someone. Uh, uh, bring out people who have been helped by uh, Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. So what the Republicans need to do, and it's only common sense, which means it's not going to happen, is bring out people who have either gone through sticker shock or lost yeah, their cancer think... doctor or something, but they're not going to do that. Well, they, you know, they have actually been reading letters from constituents in those situations from the House floor for quite a while. And, uh, you know, some real some really sad stories, but I guess what I, I hope that the Obama folks can find somebody for every day of this month. Because <laughs> it doesn't seem to be a very common thing to, that, that that happens. Well, um, they'll 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 know, they'll and, yeah, they'll find somebody. And, you know, the, there are people who are going to benefit from Obamacare, no question. Some people are going to get on Medicaid for the first time. Some people are going to, you know, who who were completely uninsurable before, right. will now be able to purchase insurance. But even the though but the whole system has been cheaper than. The whole system's yeah, yeah, been blown up for, for those for those few people, relatively speaking. Hey, listen, David, good to talk to you. Keep up the good work. We'll speak to you again. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. David Ferdoso, ladies and gentlemen, editor of Conservative Intelligence Briefing, columnist at the Washington Examiner. When we come back, Colonel Alan West will join us, former congressman from Florida, Steve Malsberg Show. News.